Click the first link in the description for the best Ask Reddit content. Today I fucked up by trying to relax after work by watching Futurama. Growing up Futurama was one of my favorite shows on TV. Now, as an adult, it is my single favorite adult orientated cartoon. To relive a little of my childhood, and make sure I see all the episodes, I started watching the TV show from beginning to end for the very first time. Fast forward to tonight, I have been slowly going through the episodes and wanted to watch one or two after a strenuous shift at work. My new job at the warehouse EA enjoyable but hard work and training is taking quite a physical toll on me. I have flat feet that cause constant pain after walking for a little bit and needed to relax. The next episode on my list was Jurassic Bark, the one where Fry discovers the fossilized remains of his dead dog. I remember the plot and how sad the episode was and even the ending. I considered skipping it but I did not want to miss an episode on my first chronologically ordered watch though the whole series. My memories of the episode did not prepare me. I, a grown man, ended up watching TV alone, outside on the back patio, crying over a cartoon dog tonight. In an attempt to unwind with light-hearted TV I ended up sobbing in a lawn chair and still feel miserable. Too long didn't read, today I fucked up by wanting to watch light-hearted TV after work and got my heart broken by Futurama's saddest episode. I read the title and knew exactly what happened. This is such a great episode but definitively a real bummer if you're just looking to relax. It's an incredibly show. I never thought a cartoon comedy could make me care so much about a character. How is Ops Heart holding up? It's a great episode, but be prepared because there are many heart-tugging episodes. Wait till you get to Game of Tones and Luck of the Friarish. Luck of the Friarish kills my soul. Me and my boyfriend just rewatched the episode where Fry had to go back in his dreams and he was saying goodbye to his mom. We both, grown ass adults, started crying our eyes out lamau. Weirdly, I've been doing exactly the same re, re-watching Futurama as an adult. The only difference in our storyline is that I skipped Jurassic Park because I knew exactly what was going to happen. Today I fucked up by breaking both my legs. Edit here's pictures, update, so they said need a general anesthetic the next day to check the stress on the bones and then would put in pins if needed. I said can't I just do the stress test and then get cast and go home? Saves time. Got told it would be too painful as I have to stand on each leg for wait for rays. I insisted on doing the stress test slash x-rays because I can deal with it and I need to get home. It turns out I don't need surgery. No medical need to me in hospital. It's purely physio that I'm in waiting for equipment to go home. I basically broke down Tuesday afternoon. My mental health isn't great, I've missed a lot of my meds and I couldn't stand being in. My youngest started school to day and mentally I was in bits and basically hysterical. So I've got most physio stuff and signed myself out. Doctor said they can make an exception under compassionate grounds as my mental health is suffering. Home now and hoping I don't get all treatment cut off cause I discharged myself. But I'm feeling a million times better being home. Although the ward clerk was really mean and said I should have thought of the blood thinning injections I need before discharging myself and it's basically my fault that I risk dying from a blood clot, frowning face, I mean that's technically true but where's the compassion dot. Technically happened yesterday but I've not slept yet so still today for me. So, I decide it's a great day to get fit. Let's get the family to a country park get some exercise, we will feel great. There is an outdoor assault course and I warn the kids, once we get there in I am no longer your mother, I am your nemesis. I will take you down. I will crush you. Standard battle procedure for my competitive side. So we are all having a laugh, messing about. There is this one part near the end. Three climbing walls. First one about four feet. Second one about seven feet and the last about ten feet. There are those climbing rocks attached both sides. Anyway, me having
Having the eternal optimism, blatant ignorance for my own safety and ADHD means I tend to act before I think. Though I decide to jump off this 10 feet high wall onto the wood chip floor below. The second I land I realize that I have, in fact, made a hideous mistake. Mostly by the blinding pain that I feel vibrating through my ankles and up my lower legs. So I roll away to the side and lay on the floor, cursing and generally being a drama queen. I am known for having a flair for the dramatic so instantly tell hubby omg, I've broken my ankles. Only joking. I'm still under the impression I've sprained them or maybe torn some ligaments. 20 minutes later I'm turning the air blue as I'm trying to get on my feet. I finally manage it and walk a few zombie-like shuffling steps before falling over and starting the whole sweary slash standing process again. Hubby and two kids go off to try and get some help from Park Ranger. Sun 2 stays with me and I manage to walk about 300 meters over about 30 minutes because if we can't get help then I still have to get back to the car somehow. I'm still determined to walk it off. Luckily Ranger arrives, takes me to our car. Hubby drops kids off at in-laws and takes me to care unit. Doc there looks me over and says he thinks it's nothing more than a sprain but will x-ray just in case. X-ray comes back and the doc is flabbergasted, he says I must have a very high pain threshold because I've broken both legs. The fibula, or whichever bone is the outside one. So I get sent to the hospital. Obligatory stop at McDonald's because hospital won't feed me as it's too late and hubby is hungry. Get to hospital. Have cannula stuck in, bloods taken etc. Get both legs cast and re-x-rayed to see how they look. Go and get a couple of paracetamol. Tomorrow, today now I guess, the consultants will all be round to decide if my right leg needs operating on. I ask if this means he can upgrade me and he says yes. But it doesn't end there. Oh no. I'm desperate for a wee. I have drink about 2 liters of water and not been for a wee since 2 pm. Finally at about midnight I finally get a bedpan. I must have sunk to my lowest point now, to have 2 broken legs and be peeing in a bedpan. No. There's more. I end up peeing like a racehorse. The bedpan overflows and I'm caught between the horror at having literally peed the bed and the relief my bladder is feeling. I mean, it's already going everywhere so I figure, in for a penny, in for a pound. And I keep going. Sweet relief. But now I'm laying in a bed of my own wee. I can't stand or practically even move. The nurse, God bless those NHS angels, have to now change my bed. So here I am, laying in hospital. The high chance of having a nop in the morning. My brother and sisters are furious with me for being so stupid. But I can't stop laughing whenever I think I've just broken both my legs. Maybe I'm in shock. Maybe I am an immature idiot. Feel like I'm faking this because surely I should be in more pain and be taking this more seriously? They keep having to reassure me that I have defiantly broken both legs. I've never been in hospital, other than having my babies so this is a whole new experience. I've never had a nop or been under general anesthesia. I think I will feel a whole lot more worried if I do need a nop. But on the bright side, I've been told they have glitter casts so there's that to look forward to. Too long didn't read, did a salt course with my kids at local country park. Jumped off high wall, landed badly and thought I'd sprained my ankles and could walk it off. Turns out I'd broken both my legs. Then to top it off I overflowed my bedpan and peed all over my hospital bed so they had to change it. Might have operation in the morning. Edited due to grammatical errors. Edit 2, just thinking at least I didn't break both my arms or edit will really take the razz out of me. Um, they have glittery casts. I need to break more bones. Broke both bones in my left lower leg decades ago had the surgery did not get a glitter cast. Be warned, often the pain is greater once inflammation has a chance to settle in. I hope your pain tolerance continues to assist, and you can stay reasonably comfortable. Your kids are going to remember this, and every time they think you might be getting competitive, they will remind you. Bit, spelling slash punctuation. I have defiantly broken both legs. I see this in my head as Ock jumping off the 10 feet wall in major defiance. I will break my legs if it's the last thing I do. To be fair I did tell the doctor I wasn't leaving without at least fractures or I'd never live it down. That was before the x-ray results came back. 
still better than breaking both your arms. That's the exact situation I'm in right now lol, it's horrible. You're not the only one. My husband called me at work one day and asked me to come pick him because he sprained his ankle. We went to urgent care and they wanted an x-ray just to check for hairline fractures. The x-ray tech came out from behind the screen with a very concerned look and immediately left the room. The doctor came in, looked at the x-ray and said go to the hospital. Break in his leg, both bones, was so long it went off the end of the x-ray plate. Now he has a couple of pounds of metal in his leg but he can walk just fine. Today I fucked up by allowing my dad to answer my front door to some evangelists. This wasn't today. It was about 11 years ago, but it's one of those stories that I'll probably tell at my dad's funeral. At the time I owned a fourplex that I was remodeling. I moved into one of the units while doing the work. It's located on one of the main street in a busy historic neighborhood in walking distance to a lot, so there's a lot of foot traffic, cars, restaurants, pubs slash breweries, offices, library, coffee shops, and several churches. My dad was in town staying with me a few days to help do some work. It was morning. I'm in the kitchen making breakfast when there is a knock on my front door. My dad, still wearing his PJ bottoms and a robe with crazy curly puffy morning hair opens the door. On my porch stood a few people, four. They were well dressed and an even mix of both women and the men. They looked like they were heading to church. That's because they were. They were Jehovah's Witnesses who decided to make some rounds before church that morning. Now, I'm not religious in the least. I would have opened the door and been polite but firm in telling them that I have no interest in talking with them and then closed the door to go on with my day. However, my family is religious. My dad is Seventh Day Adventist. He reads the Bible religiously. And he loves getting into conversations about religion any chance he can. He's also one of those types of people that gets very passionate, or overly excited, about things he believes in and preaches about. Basically, he gets very loud and very animated, and unfortunate for these people, he is very knowledgeable and passionate of the Bible. When he gets this way, people get taken aback, or plain out scared because they believe he's nuts, perhaps there's some truth to that. These poor souls had no idea they had just knocked on Pandora's box. A woman begins by introducing the group and explaining their mission. Basically they just wanted to hand out a pamphlet and invite people to their church or arrange time to discuss their religion. As soon as she offers my dad the pamphlet he starts. Dad, I'm going to stop you right there. I understand these pamphlets cost you money to print, so I wouldn't want you to waste one on me, so you can keep that. I am a devout Seventh-day Adventist and go to church. I would love to invite you in and discuss religion with you, but this is my son's place. I'm just here to help him do work. And I understand you're just wanting to hand pamphlets out on your way to church. But before you leave, I would like to ask you something. At this point he's calm and collected and not intimidating or excited, but then comes the question accompanied by the beginning of his manic passionate mode. Dad, do you believe in the Bible? The response was yes. Dad, do you believe in the Ten Commandments? The response was yes. Dad, you're lying. If you believe in the Bible and the Ten Commandments, why do you not honor the Saturday Sabbath? Side note, Seventh-day Adventists believe the Bible refers to Saturday as the true Sabbath not Sunday. He then goes into scripture about the Sabbath and how the Bible says the true Sabbath is on Saturday and not Sunday as most believe, etc. And he's full-blown manic at this point. The people were taken aback and responded with something, I don't remember TB response. But it wasn't good enough for my dad. Dad, do you believe in the commandments? Now the group realizes they stepped on a hornet's nest and make an attempt to flee. They turned and started walking down the stairs while my dad continues. Dad, do you believe in the commandments? They're not even acknowledging him at this point. They just want to be as far away as possible. My dad halfway closed the door and frantically looks for his slippers and Bible. By the time he gets them there on the sidewalk. He runs outside to the end of my walk, 
remind you still in his PJ pants, robe and crazy morning hair and a very busy area, literally screaming at them while waving his Bible around as they start moving much faster this time, do you believe in the Ten Commandments? He continues after them as far as the corner while continuing to determine if they believe in the Ten Commandments before he decided to come back in. I'm inside absolutely dying because I know him. I know how he is and gets. I could tell they were terrified of him because he was acting nuts. To me, it was absolutely hysterical seeing them almost at a full run trying to get away from my dad while he's running towards them screaming at the top of his lungs in his PJ and robe with messy hair waving his Bible in the air screaming, do you believe in the Ten Commandments? All while surrounded by a very busy area. My dad calmly walks back into the apartment and says, well, you can guarantee they put your place on their blacklist. And he was probably right since I never once saw them again the rest of the time I remained in that apartment. Too long didn't read, my dad answered my door and ran after some Jehovah Witnesses while in his PJs and robe waving his Bible in the air while screaming if they believed in the Ten Commandments. Edit, thanks for the awards. And thanks for the stories of your own and positive comments. I'm glad most found it as hysterical as I still do. My intention wasn't to badmouth religion or JWs. We all have our rights to believe what we want. And as a few pointed out, this was a win. I agree since 11 years later I still literally laugh out loud every time I think about this incident. It was the evangelists who actually effed up that day. Be safe and remember to vote. never tried that method. We used to get Mormons at my apartment complex. I politely told them several times I wasn't interested but like clockwork too would show up every Saturday and knock my door. Finally I'd had enough and answered the door but naked with a beer in one hand and a cigarette in the other. I got no more visits. Not the most mature thing I've ever done but hey at 20 I wasn't very mature anyway. This might by the first today I fucked up that can also be a LPT. Lol, a LPT for a very committed individual I suppose. Genius, that's how you chase them away. Can attest that threatening to kick their asses at 8am on a Saturday gets a courtesy call from the sheriff department. So your dad is a religious big Lebowski? Dude was not abiding that day. My grandpa would invite them in and talk to them for a long time. He was anti-religious. At the end he would tell them so. They would ask why they were invited in. He would tell them so you have less time to bother the rest of the neighborhood. Everyone loved him, 